Today, I want to talk about making the most of the time. The Bible often speaks of wisdom as the mark of a believer's life. Wisdom is the fruit of knowing God. If you knew the architect and builder of the universe and hear his word, wouldn't your life show a certain level of good judgment? Knowing God isn't just about avoiding lying, cheating, stealing. It's about making good life choices. The book of Proverbs often draws contrast between wisdom and foolishness. A few examples. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Those who have no sense deride their neighbors, but those who have understanding hold their tongues. Those who confess their sins do not conceal their sins do not prosper, but those who confess and renounce them find mercy. Let's check into Paul's letter to the Ephesians where we see this tradition of walking in wisdom continue. Verse 15 says, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise. The King James Bible says, See that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. As the people of God, we want to carefully watch how we live in this world. If you are a Virginian and Southerner and were suddenly dropped off, say, in Japan or in France, you would want to watch how you live just so that you wouldn't lose your identity, lose who you are. And so it is with being a people of God in this world. Particularly, Paul says, make the most of the time. The old expression is redeeming the time. And the time here is not minutes and hours. This is not about squeezing more hours out of your day. Rather, this is about making the most of the opportunities by wisdom according to the right priorities. An author who writes on time management went to see a woman who was one of the busiest persons that she knew. She ran a small business with 12 people on payroll. She had in her spare time six children. And the first time, not surprisingly, she was not available for the interview. But interestingly, it was because she went out for a hike that day. So finally, when the author caught up with her, she said, listen, everything I do, every minute I spend is my choice. She made time to go out on a hike on a beautiful day. Instead of saying, she said, I don't have time to do X, Y, or Z, she would say, I don't do X, Y, or Z because it's not a priority. This person had the same number of hours as everybody else, but she made them align with her priorities. Likewise, being a Christian means making wise choices, including for our time. The Apostle Paul says that the days are evil. In other words, unless we watch our ways, it is so easy to simply be, to have nothing to do with the will of God and to waste our time. As I mentioned, Afghanistan is becoming a terrible tragedy and even more so because of more than 20 years of involvement from our nation infrastructure, war equipment, let alone the lives lost. It is turning out to be a house built on sand. And that's the most benign expression we can use at this point. Would there be a silver lining? I hope so, certainly. But it's an example of the days being evil. The days are evil, the scripture says. Good intentions are tangled with corrupt human nature and 
unless we walk in wisdom, unless the grace of God is with us, it is possible for people, for us, to lose valuable time and resources or more. How do we go about making the most of the time? First, seek God's will, the scripture says. Verse 16 says, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not live as if there is no God, but discern God's will. If we lived a good life and discovered at the end that we had little to do with God's will or what God was doing in this world, then it would be a huge lost opportunity, wouldn't it? And how do we discern the will of God on our life? Sometimes we need to pray on some specific choices that we do face. Lord, should I move this time? Should we buy this property? Should I go and talk with this person? And yes, the Holy Spirit can help us in that way, but we can begin with the basic way of discerning God's will. Listen to God's word. See the commandments that God gave in the scriptures. See the Ten Commandments and the greatest commandments of loving God and loving our neighbors. Hear the prophets calling for justice, mercy, and kindness. As the prophet says, the Lord has shown you, O man, what is good. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? And then the highest incarnation of God's wisdom, the wisdom by which God created heaven and the earth, is none other than Jesus Christ himself. Therefore, the best way to seek God's will for our lives, to live by God's will in our life, is to be, to remain in Jesus Christ and to have his words remain in us. If I can put it even more precisely, it is to live by the Holy Spirit. But Jesus said, whoever hears these words of mine and does them, is like a wise builder who built his house on the rock. The question when it comes to making the most of the time is, am I seeking God's will? And that in turn is a question, am I following Jesus? Some people might assume that they follow Jesus because they go to church or they go to Sunday school. And yes and no. You follow Jesus when you hear and do the words of Jesus. Or, as I said, put it even more precisely, you follow Jesus when you follow the Holy Spirit. When you establish a relationship with God and submit to his word, and more and more you will be able to hear the leading of the Holy Spirit. Spend time in prayer and speak, the Holy Spirit will speak even clearly. Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. We must be in the discipline of discerning the will of God through the word, through the scriptures, through prayer. Many people are fixated today with anything but the will of God, and that is how we waste the gift of time. We may be in the valley or in hardship, but if you are in the will of God, then your time will come, just like Joseph, who for many years 
was enslaved or in prison in Egypt. But God raised him up when the time came. Abraham, in the Bible, had left his home and his kinsmen according to the word of God, and he eventually settled in Canaan. And one day it became clear that the land could not support the flocks of animals for both him and his nephew, Lot, who at the time was with him. So Abraham said to Lot, let's separate. If you go left, I'll take right. And Lot looked up and saw the plain of the Jordan and saw that it was well watered everywhere like the garden of the Lord, the scripture says. So that's where he chose. And then after Lot left, the Bible says, God spoke to Abraham and said, Raise your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward, for all the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. Remember, he was at the time a new immigrant. Abraham, despite a few stumbles and mishaps, essentially followed the word of the Lord now we know what happened to Lot, who settled in the town of Sodom. He barely saved his own life when God destroyed the city. Are we discerning and following the will of God daily? Are we doing what God has called us to do? Be very careful how you live, the scripture says, uh, not as unwise people, but as wise. Many years ago, I went to a large mission conference in, near Chicago on the campus of Wheaton College. And I was particularly impressed with one speaker, a former missionary, longtime missionary, many people were. And shortly afterwards, I learned that one of the pastors in Northern Virginia had invited him to come and speak at his church, which at that time and still is the largest Korean congregations in Virginia, thousands of people. But this person politely declined, and his reason was that he had considered how many years he had left in his life at most before going to see the Lord. And he had adopted very specific criteria as to where he might be most needed, where he might best serve the Lord. He was honored to be invited, but he just had to choose which was the way to make the most of his time. Now, I might not recommend this to people in their 20s, but if you are in your later time with experiences, it's time to discern how best to serve God and what to make, how to make most of the time. It's never too late to start thinking about the will of God on your life. If you are still here, you can serve the Lord. As I said, it's, it begins with simply loving the Lord and following the Lord and loving his people. The Bible also says that in order to follow the will of God to make the most of the time, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit because we cannot follow Jesus merely by our own willpower. We could not walk with Jesus if we are empty within or the pleasures of the world should intoxicate us. We could not redeem the time if that's the case. When we have the life of God within through the Holy Spirit, then we can do that which is right. So that is why worship and prayer are so important. They feed and nurture us spiritually. Be filled with the Spirit, says 19, verse 19, as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts. At the heart of the Christianity is joy 
joy of the Lord, one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Do not quench the Spirit, but nurture and cultivate room in your life for the Holy Spirit. I once heard a family friend who had spent decades in Tanzania and neighboring countries as a missionary. She planted so many churches and worked with so many people. But she said that she regretted not having prayed more. If she would do it over, all over again, she would pray more, she said. Finally, we can remember that the kingdom of God is coming. A hallmark of the kingdom of God that Jesus taught is that not only will there be separation of good and evil, but there will be an accounting of what was done in the life that God has given us. Remember the parable of the talents that Jesus gave? A man came back from a long journey and did an accounting with his servants who each had been entrusted with the master's properties. The one who had been given two talents and made two more talents were equally praised as the one who had been given five talents and five more talents. The one who had buried his talent, however, was reprimanded. The truth is that we, as people of God, have received, we have each received what belongs to God. And during this time, we are all working on behalf of Jesus Christ. Some have been given much, others not as much. Much will be required from those who have been given much, the Bible says. Those who are faithful and eager with it will receive praise from the king when the kingdom comes. If we cannot do the work of the kingdom ourselves, for some reason we can support those who are engaged in it. The kingdom of God, what God is doing in this world is of such urgent and important nature that some people have been called to leave everything behind for the sake of the gospel. As Jesus sends them out, he says in, ver in Matthew 10, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sends, sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Find those who are doing the work of God, support them, pray for them. That's one way your time here on earth will have been well spent. Let's remember today that the people of God are called to walk in wisdom, walk very carefully. As followers of Christ, we are to make the most of the time, discerning the will of God, nurturing our spiritual life, and being eager to serve the work of Jesus today. May God's Holy Spirit help us do so. Let us pray.